Welcome back to the Visible Risk Masterclass series on cyber risk quantification. I'm Dr. Jack Freund, and today we're going to be talking about how you can choose the right CRQ solution for your organization. To date, CRQ has been difficult. We've talked in this series about a number of things that have caused organizations trouble in trying to create their own CRQ programs within their risk management operations. Some of those things are, it's very resource intensive. You have to hire a lot of staff or uh, bring in consultants to build these things, not to mention the amount of technology you need to build or acquire to be able to produce these kind of results. And when you do, oftentimes it's not heavily automated. Instead, we are relying upon uh, antiquated solutions that are not tools driven. All the telemetry data that you have at the lower levels of your cybersecurity operations team rarely are able to find their ways into your CRQ solutions. Also, a lot of these things rely upon subjective views of what your organization looks like. For instance, asking organizational representatives what their loss is going to be. This is useful to a degree, but still has a high degree of subjectivity that a lot of executives and boards dismiss as being unreliable. Finally, because of the cumulative nature of these problems, you find that the results are not often action-oriented. They don't tell you which precise things at the lower level of your organization need to be fixed in order to be able to affect the outcome at the top of the organization. What we've done at Visible Risk is divide the landscape of CRQ into four levels. These are not necessarily hierarchical levels, but they help describe the type of things the organization can do when building CRQ solutions. CRQ level one, or what we call the peer baseline, is the foundation of all of these things. It brings to bear a set of industry data sets that allow you to see what your organization looks like in terms of loss potential and frequency of loss against a broader landscape of peer cohorts that have experienced similar losses to you. This becomes, again, the foundation for the other three levels that we'll talk about here. Level two and three have similar levels of fidelity to them. We adjust that peer baseline using either an externally validated set of data, or we use a series of questionnaires and survey tools that allow your organization to respond to what their own loss potential and what their own control states look like. These things allow organizations to scale or adjust those losses so that they're more specific to your organization. Finally, the most validated, the most reliable, is CRQ level four. This uses inside-out data, or actual data that's derived from measuring the control states within your organization, and then using the results of those assessments to scale those peer baselines that we assessed in CRQ level one. Here's an example of what this looks like on this graph. You can see that CRQ level one creates the foundation of this. We have the minimum and the maximum type of losses, and then a curve that says this is where we think the most likely value is going to be, based upon your peers, based upon industry data. In CRQ level two and three, you can see that the, the peak of that curve gets adjusted based upon the answers to the questionnaires that you fill out, or based upon the external scans of your organization. This allows companies to get a better view of what loss looks like. And then finally, CRQ level four is the most accurate with the highest fidelity data, which says definitively, uh, within these parameters of loss, this min and this max value, we think this is the most likely value where your, where your organization's loss is likely to fall. Determining which CRQ level is right for you can be facilitated by better understanding what the use case is that you're trying to use it for. For example, CRQ level one is excellent for looking at systemic risk across an entire industry segment. This is good for insurance companies that are trying to estimate what their losses look like if they're oversubscribed to uh, potential losses in a certain sector or undersubscribed in other areas where there's opportunity for business growth. This is also, also helpful for organizations that are looking to benchmark their particular loss and control states against their peers. This data is helpful in establishing a, a set of parameters that form a baseline for the other types of CRQ levels. In level two, we can leverage externally validated information, things like looking at your SSL certificate configurations or analyzing whether or not you have botnet infections to better understand the general control environment of your organization. We use that data then to scale the results we find in CRQ level one to better understand what that loss looks like for your organization or for a variety of organizations with which you're doing business. 
And that's one of the main use cases for this, is better understanding things like third-party risk. If you have a large group of organizations that you're managing, uh, it gives you the ability to scope these things well to understand these are ones that have general indicators of good security, and these are ones that have general indicators of not so good security. It's also, help, also helpful for organizations that are trying to figure out the type of insurance purchasing that they want to do. Do we have too much insurance, too little insurance? Uh, Syracuse level one and two in general provide estimates of things that are going on. And that's helpful sometimes to scope things broadly and make quick decisions. CRQ level three ask organizations to provide some additional information about their control states to better understand what's going on. This works really well for third-party risk management programs where we take the results of a series of uh, third-party questionnaires and then scale that CRQ level one curve based upon those answers. It's also very help helpful for counterparty risk where you're trying to understand insurance losses uh, within an organizational perspective. Finally, CRQ level four gives us the opportunity to have the most validated set of data available to make really good decision making. In fact, it facilitates decision making within organizations extremely well, such that boards and directors and executives are able to better understand what loss looks like, how they can optimize their program, and within the budget they've already allocated to cybersecurity, where are the best places to spend that budget? It helps organizations better understand regulatory problems and helps them understand more uh, and provide better data for a board report that can be uh, understand better by the board of directors for their organizations. Uh, lastly, it also provides the foundations for insurance companies that are looking to do uh, really targeted underwriting of, of potential clients. That gives them the opportunity to know more about the inside of, their, of the organizations that they're trying to underwrite and know what their loss potential is going to be. So how does this work? How are we able to bring you these different layers of, of CRQ? Well, it works in three different ways. We have a series of automated data collectors that allow us to gather information about your organization. This is through APIs direct to your cloud instances. It's through a series of collector and tester tools that we've developed, as well as a series of interviews that allow us to understand better things that are going on in your organization. This is a mix of things you might find in CRQ level two, three, and four, uh, but the reality is this gives us the best information and the best pool of data to be able to provide you the most accurate loss curves and decision-making tools for your organization. It also allows us to bring to bear some of the copious amounts of external data sets we have from industry data and control data across a large segment of organizations across the world. Once we've gathered all this data, we combine it using a transparent modeling regime and computational engines that allow us to produce standardized results that are consistent and comparable across the industry. We take those results and put them in front of executives using our expert-led delivery team that allows us to answer specific questions organizations may have around how much risk do we have, what type of peer benchmarking do we need, how material would this loss be, and then finally, uh, what type of specific questions do we have to answer, such as uh, are we allocating the right amount of budget, are we getting the right security for the budget that we're spending, and how much cyber insurance should we have? Here's an example of our executive reporting based upon something like a CRQ level four analysis. Here you can see different tiles that express not only loss potential for the organization across a couple different scenarios, but also deep insights into the control state of the organization from things like security culture to things like third party risk management. This type of reporting has been board tested and provides detailed analysis that boards can take action on without being overly complicated or technical. These results have been tested with a number of different organizations, one of which you see here that has offered their perspective on how useful it has been for this organization. Arvest Bank was able to make better decisions based upon the analysis that we did using a CRQ level four analysis. They're able to improve their security budget and also make an insurance purchase as well as staff key positions to make sure that the organization was operating effectively. These are the goals of a CRQ program generally, to make sure that the decisions that are being made are well-informed and that the type of decisions that are being made uh, have the opportunity to improve security and keep the business operations up and running in times of cyber stress. Thank you for joining me on this episode of the Visible Risk Masterclass series on cyber risk quantification. Join me on the next one where we'll spend more time talking about different aspects of CRQ and how it can help your organization.